Snake, have you seen 007 from Russia with Love? Nah, I don't like those movies. Real spies are nothing like James Bond. It's pure fantasy. Snake, I don't think the Major's going to like you saying that. And even though it's fiction, I can't help but comparing myself to Bond. What exactly don't you like about James Bond? I mean, is it the fantastic gadgets? The cars? The guns? Major. Snake, wouldn't you like to have a gun shaped like a pen? What good is a pen gonna do me in the jungle? I'd look like a fool. Then what about a snake-shaped gun? You could make it look like you're grappling with a giant snake and then get a shot in on the enemy while they're distracted. <laughs> okay, now you're being ridiculous. We'll make you a snake-shaped gun that folds up and fits into an attaché case. Will you give it a rest? Oh, I get it. You're worried about how to handle the ladies, aren't you? No! Mega! Ah! <laughs> 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 
We'll meet again. Snake, are you okay? Snake! Major. Snake. Are you all right? You're not hurt? No. That was a hell of a drop, but I'm fine. Looks like there's no way back up, though. I see. Well, anyway, it's good to hear you're not injured. Slipping and falling may not have been part of the plan, but getting into that cave was. Proceed further into the cave. The cave seems to be structured like a maze, but there's an exit somewhere. Find a way out of the cave and head for the aqueduct. All right, but it might take me a while to get through this cave. Are you hurt? No. Is it the enemy? Did they set a trap for you? Not that either. Then what is it? It's dark in here. Dark? Yeah, there's no light anywhere. I should have brought a flashlight with me. So what you're saying is that it's going to take you a while because you don't have a flashlight? Right. Snake, if you don't have a flashlight, you should be looking for a substitute. I tell you, American soldiers these days rely too much on ready-made equipment. Here we go again. What was that? Nothing. American soldiers rely too much on ready-made equipment. Well, not only that, they can't seem to grasp that one piece of equipment can have multiple functions. Back when I was in the SAS, we never had that problem. We were trained to use every piece of equipment in as many ways as possible. If you don't have a flashlight, look for something else. You need to develop flexible, innovative thinking if you want to... Hey, are you listening to me? Yeah, of course I am. First, take a look at what you're carrying with you now. Don't you have anything that can provide you with some light? The gauge below your life gauge is your stamina gauge. It shows, as the name suggests, your remaining stamina. As you consume stamina, your natural life regeneration is slowed and your hands shake more. Your O2 gauge and grip gauge also become shorter. Excessively low stamina can often impede your mission objectives. Make sure you replenish stamina before that occurs. Gonna use a grenade, huh? That's an RGD-5, the standard blast fragmentation grenade of the Soviet Army. The grenade itself is composed of two steel-plated casings. Each of those casings has an inner fragment liner that causes it to burst into over 300 shards when the grenade explodes. The grenade will deliver heavy damage to any enemies within its blast area. The safety pin is on the opposite side relative to the M26, so be sure to hold the safety lever down with your finger when you grip it. The safety is released when you actually throw the grenade, and it'll explode about three seconds later. So what you're saying is, it won't explode in my hand while I'm holding it? Of course not! No. Oh. To throw a grenade, press and release the weapon button. Remember that how far you throw it depends on how long the button's pressed. A short tap will drop it close to you, and a long press will lob it away. It'll probably be easier to control your throw if you do it in first-person view. Snake, are you all right? Yeah, just barely. What the hell were all those hornets? Most likely that was the pain, one of the cobras. I figured as much. Are they tracking me? I don't know. The cobras only take orders from the boss. Not even Volgan knows what they're really up to, so I don't know anything about them either. No kidding. I'll try and dig up as much as I can about them. You just focus on moving ahead. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovie swamp. And Snake, be careful. That cave is pitch dark inside. Good. I did remember to tell you then. <sighs> if it's completely dark and you need a light, try using a torch. I heard there's some emergency torches stored somewhere in that cave. Torches. Got it. So where are they? Huh? Where are the torches? How should I know? Go find them yourself. Saving the game, Snake? Snake, 
Have you seen 007 from Russia with Love? Nah, I don't like those movies. Real spies are nothing like James Bond. It's pure fantasy. Snake, I don't think the Major's going to like you saying that. And even though it's fiction, I can't help but comparing myself to Bond. What exactly don't you like about James Bond? I mean, is it the fantastic gadgets? The cars? The guns? Major. Snake, wouldn't you like to have a gun shaped like a pen? What good is a pen gonna do me in the jungle? I'd look like a fool. Then what about a snake-shaped gun? You can make it look like you're grappling with a giant snake and then get a shot in on the enemy while they're distracted. <laughs> okay, now you're being ridiculous. We'll make you a snake-shaped gun that folds up and fits into an attaché case. Will you give it a rest? Oh, I get it. You're worried about how to handle the ladies, aren't you? No. I knew it. Hm, to tell you the truth, I don't like the idea of playing hanky-panky with enemy femme fatales either. But that's part of Bond's appeal. You could learn a thing or two from him. I mean, what about this Eva? What are you planning to do with her? I... I don't even trust her yet. No, that's not what I mean. You you can't let yourself get involved. This is a game of spy versus spy. She's using you just as much as you're using her. I realize that. You've got to grab the initiative. And to do that, you have to get the upper hand in the relationship. That's what a spy is supposed to do. Get the upper hand? I don't think I'm cut out for that mission. Maybe if you change your code name to 00 Snake. Major. 007 is the biggest thing to come out of England since the Mayflower. I wouldn't be surprised if they made 20 more of those movies. Didn't you know? The Major is a huge James Bond fan. Don't get him worked up like this. Worked up? Maybe you don't realize this, but now that you've got him started talking about Bond, I'm going to have to listen to him lecture for a whole hour after he gets off the radio. You have my sympathy. It's too bad you can't enjoy such a great movie, though. I guess I'm just one of those people who can't enjoy spy flicks. That cave is known as Chornaya Peshara. In Russian, Chornaya Peshara means the black cave from which cold wind blows. It's a magma cavern formed millions of years ago, back when Salino Yarsk was the site of volcanic activity. The structure of the cave is pretty complex, but you should be able to find the aqueduct if you keep moving inward. Head toward the interior of the cave. Eva, where are you now? I told you, didn't I? I'm right near the Colonel. Pretty weak answer, if you ask me. I suppose you're right. Eva. Snake, I'm under orders to cooperate with you, but that doesn't mean I have to tell you everything I know. I would assume the same applies to you, too. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovie Swamp.
By the way, Snake. What? You know the Ocelot unit commander? Ocelot? Yeah. That's not his real name, is it? I wouldn't think so. Is it a code name? You mean like Snake? Yeah. Maybe. Why? Is that strange? No. I was just wondering why he's called Ocelot. Why is that? Well, I looked it up, and it turns out the Ocelot is a wild cat whose habitat stretches from the southern U.S. down to northern Argentina. They live in a variety of different environments from tropical rainforests to savannas. The biggest ones can grow up to one meter in length. They're normally solitary creatures, and their diet consists mainly of small animals and fish. During the day, they sleep up in the trees, but at night... Yeah, uh, paramedic. Oh, right. So, the ocelot is an animal that lives on the American continent. But then I wondered, why would a Soviet officer be using the name of an American wildcat? Good question. Maybe it's because he's fast and agile like an ocelot. Hmm. Yeah, maybe you're right. Hmm. But why'd you go to all the trouble of looking it up? Because I was curious. Was it helpful? Uh, sure. Snake, have you heard about the massacre that happened in the forest near the village of Gnezdovo? The Katyn Forest Massacre, right? During World War II, the German army came upon the bodies of 4,000 dead Polish in the forest of Katyn. Yeah, Germany blamed the Soviet Union, but the Soviet Union denied it, blaming Germany in return. The truth is that Stalin ordered the NKVD to carry out the killings. And it's not just Katyn. In places like Western Ukraine and Belarus, there must have been at least 20,000 Poles in the prison camps. Why are you telling me this? Volgin was one of the people responsible. He was one of the vicious leaders behind it. Volgin was? He blamed it on a prisoner revolt to allay any fears, and requested they be put to death. I've heard that Volgin even removed the blindfolds from each prisoner before he beat them to death. I knew he wasn't all there in the head, but this... Not someone you could be friends with. Snake, be careful. That cave is inhabited by vampire bats. The vampire bat bites its victims and sucks their blood. Got it. Speaking of bats... Just save it. Huh? I know you're gonna talk about vampire movies, Attack of the Vampire Donuts, or Dracula vs. the Space Hippos, or something like that. Actually, I was going to say that bats are known to use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings. Oh. Bats use supersonic waves to sense their surroundings, so you might be able to keep them away by blasting them with a special kind of sound wave. Alternatively, you could try equipping a torch and waving it around with the CQC button. As for taste, I suppose there's no reason you couldn't eat them. Hmm. Snake, do you hate vampire movies? What? Just now, you sounded like you really hated them. I did? Yeah. Oh. Well, no one really likes them, do they? Some people do. Like you? Yeah. They're fascinating, you know? Like the movie Dracula... Don't say it. Why not? Just don't. Are you afraid? What? You're afraid of vampires, aren't you? Don't be ridiculous. But... Listen. There are no such things as vampires. They're just a stupid, made-up legend. And if they do seem real sometimes... Well, sure. You think I'd be afraid of something like that? No. Exactly. Right. I'm not afraid of vampires. Uh-huh. It's just that whenever somebody starts talking about vampires, I end up dreaming about them that night, and I don't need that right now. That's all. Okay. Snake, it says here you can catch maroon sharks in that area. The maroon shark is found mostly in Southeast Asia, but it's not actually a shark. It's related to the carp. It's also known as the red fin cigar shark, the river barb, and the sultan fish. Interesting. So how does it taste? According to the guide, it's good but it's kind of oily and it has a lot of little bones. Fine with me. I never worry about the little things. So I gathered.
You can capture animals alive by using the tranquilizer gun or a mouse trap. When you capture a live animal, you can carry it on you as a weapon by going to backpack in the survival viewer. Once an animal is on your person, equip it and press the weapon button to throw it. Throwing a venomous animal at an enemy might be enough to knock him out. Even non-venomous animals like frogs can be used to distract the enemy's attention. And since I know you're going to ask me, yes, keeping animals alive prevents them from rotting and makes them taste better when you eat them. Remember though, you've only got three cages for capturing live animals. Snake, that area is home to the Kenyan mangrove crabs. The Kenyan mangrove crab is a land-going crab. It lives in burrows dug near seashores and mangrove swamps. It's not poisonous, but it might hurt a little if it attacks you with its pinchers. Treat it with caution. Got it. So this thing must taste pretty good, huh? Why do you say must? It's a crab, isn't it? It is. And crabs are good to eat. What's so good about them? You don't like crab? Not at all. Why not? Why? How can you eat those things? They're all purple and yellow striped, and they stink like cat pee. But that's just my opinion. Don't listen to me. Let's see here. The guide says... No way. It says they're delicious. Well, if you want to eat one, then go right ahead, but count me out. Mm -hmm. Snake, there's a mushroom called the Russian glowcap growing in that area. The Russian glowcap is a kind of luminescent fungus. A mushroom that glows in the dark. Why would a mushroom glow in the dark? It's bioluminescent, just like a firefly. It uses the so-called luciferin luciferase reaction. To put it simply, luciferin reacts with luciferase in the presence of magnesium 2 plus ions, breaking it down into oxyluciferin and carbon dioxide. The carbonyl groups in the oxyluciferin are initially in an electrical excited state. When they return to their base state, they give off light. Did you get all that? Not really. Oh. I ate one and it recharged my batteries. Huh? I thought a mushroom that glows that bright was bound to charge up my batteries if I ate it. And I was right. You're serious. What's wrong? N nothing. Um, Snake, can you excuse me for a second? Sure. Did you just hear that? Yeah. There's no way eating a bioluminescent mushroom would cause your batteries to recharge. What do you think it means? Beats me. Maybe it's all in his mind. You mean like a placebo effect? <laughs> Why not? You've seen how gullible he is. I guess there's no harm done. Should we let him keep believing it? Sounds good to me. Okay, Snake. I'm back. Yes, the Russian glow cap is a glowing mushroom, so it'll recharge your batteries when you eat it.
That reminds me, I've heard they keep a shotgun stored in that part of the cave. Why don't you go look for it? Eba, I wanted to ask you about Ocelot. Yeah, I know. He's pretty infatuated with you, isn't he? That's not what I meant. Aren't the Ocelots an elite unit? Yeah. So how'd he get to be their commander? He can't be any older than 18 or 19. I can't believe he's already a major. I heard from the Colonel that he's been given special treatment. Special treatment? Yeah, he's the son of some legendary hero or something. Mm, no wonder he seems to have the right stuff. So who is this legendary hero anyway? Beats me. Mm. The Colonel never told me. All I heard was that his mother was supposedly shot in the gut during battle, and that he was born right there with bullets whizzing past them. 
pregnant woman in the middle of a battle? That's what I heard. They say that when they stitched her up, the scar was shaped like a snake. Well, that's battlefield medicine for you. What about his father, this legendary hero? He didn't tell me. I don't think Ocelot's ever met his parents. Are they dead? Maybe. I don't know. There were a lot of MIAs back then, during the last days of the war. Ocelot probably would have ended up the same way. But he was taken in and raised by Gru and Volgan. Because he was special. That's my guess. Sons of the boss! Forms of hornets at will. Watch out for his hornet based attacks. Snake, watch out for those bullet bees. Bullet bees are the name the pain gives the special hornets he raises inside his own body. And if they get into your body, your wounds will become worse and worse until you get rid of them. 
If you're afflicted by bullet bees, go into the survival viewer immediately and use Cure to dig them out with your knife. Once the bullet bees are out, don't forget to apply styptic and disinfect it to the wound. The pain is said to possess the power to control his hornets at will. Watch out for insect-based attacks, especially his so-called bullet bees. Snake, as long as the pain is using his hornets to protect his body, you won't be able to damage him with gun attacks. You'll need to use a grenade to get rid of the hornet swarm first. Go into first-person view and throw a grenade at him. A shotgun should work as well. Get rid of those hornets protecting him and then attack him with a gun. The exit from the cave should be toward the back. Proceed through the cave and find the exit to the swamp aqueduct. I see you've got yourself a ration. Rations are portable meals carried by Soviet soldiers. I've heard some nasty stories about how they taste. 
It looks like the rumors are true. Great. Hey, you should be grateful. Those things are designed to last. No matter how long you keep a ration, it'll never go bad. And they're surprisingly good for you, too. I'd take a snake over this any day, even if it's a little rotten. You are hopeless. So you're wearing the tree bark camouflage. Tree bark is a forest pattern created primarily for use by hunters. It'll give you an exceptionally low profile if you wear it when you're pressed up against a tree. Snake, you beat the pain. Not without a tough fight. How did it feel to fight one of the boss's comrades? What are you getting at? I just want to know what it's like to have fought a member of the legendary Cobra unit. That's all. What you want to know is if I can really face the boss. Is that right? Well, that too. Don't waste your time worrying about me. I'll get the mission done. I certainly hope so. So the exit of the cave is up ahead? Right. Go to the end of the cave and you'll come out in an aqueduct overgrown with mangroves. This leads to the Ponizovie Swamp. You want to save? Snake? Have you heard of The Last War? Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. It's a Japanese movie where the world ends in a nuclear war. Tensions between East and West reach the breaking point, and before anyone can stop it, they launch the ICBMs. Humanity is wiped out by a war that no one wanted. The movie depicts that destruction from the eyes of ordinary people. Their simple daily lives are torn apart by the terrible power of a war that has nothing to do with them. Everybody's afraid of the next big war. But there's only so much that one person can do. That's why the people who have the power to stop it have to. using the anti-personnel sensor I see. The sensor vibrates when it detects organic reactions from human targets. It's been adjusted to respond only to humans, so unlike other sensors, it'll let you ignore animals and focus only on the enemy. It'll even detect enemies that aren't moving, and you won't have to worry about it giving away your position. But on the flip side, it won't tell you the exact location of the target. Keep that in mind when you're using it. Also, remember that when you use it in first-person view, it'll only scan in the direction you're facing. So you're wearing the tree bark camouflage.
You say they have flying platforms out there? Flying platforms are a type of personal VTOL aircraft. They were working on those in America, too, weren't they? Yeah, back in the 50s. They were supposedly going to be used for scouting and patrol missions, as well as to spot for artillery units and transport troops into rough territory. They even got an initial prototype off the ground in 1955. But the thing wasn't fast enough, and there were problems with getting it to stop and turn in midair, so they ended up scrapping the project. The ones you see there were built by the Soviets after they got their hands on the American design plans. The American model used a pair of contra-rotating rotors to generate lift, but those Soviet models seemed to be using jet engines instead. They must have kept going with their research after the U.S. abandoned its own project. Now they've finally overtaken us. You gotta give them credit for sticking with it. If you get spotted by an enemy riding a flying platform, they'll go into alert phase. The flying platforms themselves don't seem to be armed, but the pilots are carrying Scorpion submachine guns and grenades. The recoil on the Scorpion is low enough so that they should be able to fire one-handed in full auto mode. That gives them some serious firepower. I see you found a Russian false mango. The Russian false mango is a mango-like fruit found only in Selinoyarsk. The egg-shaped fruit is sweet and tangy with a pleasing aroma, just like a mango. Also, the seeds can be used to make a medicine that aids in digestion. It might come in handy if you ever have an upset stomach. I see you found your way to the aqueduct. If you follow it to the north, you'll come to a warehouse used for transporting supplies. Pass through the warehouse, and you'll come out into a forest. The lab where Sokolov is being held is directly to the north of that forest, so head north.
You want to save? Hold on a sec. Snake, have you ever seen the War of the Worlds? No. These flying saucers from Mars arrive on Earth disguised as meteorites. The saucers use their heat rays to attack the nearby towns. And then... Um... Something wrong. Uh, the thing is, I was too scared to watch. I had my eyes shut almost the whole time. Then you haven't seen it. No, it's not that. It's based on a novel by H.G. Wells. You haven't seen it, have you? That does remind me, though. When I was two years old, my father listened to the radio drama version of the story. It was right after dinner on Sunday, and we were relaxing in the living room. They said monsters had come out of a meteorite that landed in New Jersey. It sounded just like a real live news broadcast. My father said he and my older brother actually believed it and started yelling and panicking. My mother supposedly grabbed me from my crib and took me out to the car, still wrapped up in blankets. But then, just as my dad was about to start the car, he realized that it was all just a radio drama. Because on the car's radio, they were playing Bing Crosby tunes. No matter what station he turned to, no one else seemed to be reporting on this big history-making news story. Sounds like something out of the big broadcast. Nobody said a word. We all went back to our rooms. My father and brother got off with a scolding from my mother, but I was the one who really suffered. After that incident, every time I acted up, my father and brother would scare me by saying, The Martians are coming! That's terrible. Isn't it, though? So, you haven't seen the movie. I... I saw it. So... So even nuclear weapons wouldn't work against the Martian war machines. Uh-huh. Anyway, Snake, if you conceal yourself like the Martians did, the enemy won't know what hit them. Conceal myself? Maybe not in a meteorite, but if you can hide yourself inside something a little more close at hand. Mm hmm Close at hand. Something like... a box. Ah, uh, I get it. So, you never saw the movie. I saw it, all right? <laughs>